You're flying at 80,000 feet, the edge of space. Below you, the curvature of the Earth stretches in every direction. Above, the sky transitions from deep blue to the blackness of the cosmos. And you're moving so fast that you're literally outrunning the sound of your own engines. Now imagine someone on the ground asks you a simple question, how fast are you going? What happened next became one of the most legendary stories in aviation history. But to understand why this moment matters, we need to understand the man in the cockpit, the machine he was flying, and the journey that brought them together. This is the story of Major Brian Shule and the SR-71 Blackbird. And trust me, it's unlike anything you've ever heard. The SR-71 Blackbird wasn't just an airplane, it was a physics problem with wings. Designed in the early 1960s by Lockheed's legendary Skunk Works division, led by the brilliant Kelly Johnson, the Blackbird was built to do something that seemed impossible, fly faster and higher than any missile could reach. This wasn't about dogfighting or dropping bombs. This was about intelligence gathering in the most hostile environments on Earth, and it had to be untouchable. The numbers alone sound like science fiction. Top speed over Mach 3.2, which translates to roughly 2,200 miles per hour. Operational altitude, 85,000 feet well into the stratosphere. At that speed and altitude, the friction from the air would heat the aircraft's titanium skin to over 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The plane would literally expand by several inches during flight. Fuel would leak from the tanks on the ground because the aircraft was designed to seal only when it got hot enough. Think about that. They built a plane that could and hold fuel until it was flying at temperatures that would melt most metals. But here's what made the SR-71 truly special. It was never shot down, not once. Over its entire operational career from 1966 to 1998, more than 4,000 missiles were fired at SR-71's zero hits. The Blackbird's defense wasn't countermeasures or armor. It was pure, overwhelming speed. When a surface-to-air missile was detected, the pilot didn't evade. He accelerated by the time the missile reached the SR-71's altitude. The Blackbird was already miles away. Only 85 pilots ever qualified to fly this machine. The selection process was brutal. You had to be a test pilot or have significant high-performance aircraft experience. You had to be cool under pressure, capable of making split-second decisions while traveling faster than a rifle bullet. And you had to want it more than anything. Brian Schul wanted it. But his path to the cockpit of the world's fastest plane was anything but straightforward. Before Brian Schull became an SR-71 pilot, he nearly died in Southeast Asia. It was 1970, Captain Schull was flying low-level close air support missions in an A-1 Skyraider during the Vietnam War. The Skyraider was a propeller-driven attack aircraft, affectionately called the SPAD. It was slow, rugged, and designed to get down in the dirt with ground forces. Schull loved it. He was on his 212th combat mission. Then everything went wrong. Ground fire tore through his aircraft. The plane erupted in flames. Shul managed to crash land in the jungle, but the impact was catastrophic. When he pulled himself from the wreckage, his flight suit had melted into his skin. He was burned over most of his body, with third-degree burns covering huge portions of his legs, arms, and face. Alone in enemy territory, severely injured, he somehow evaded capture and was eventually rescued. But survival was just the beginning of his fight. The doctors told him he'd never walk normally again. They said his flying career was over. He spent months in the hospital, enduring surgery after surgery, skin grafts, physical therapy that felt like torture. His body was broken, but his spirit, that was something different. Shul refused to accept their verdict. He worked through the pain, pushed through the rehabilitation, and slowly, impossibly, began to recover. Against all medical predictions, he not only learned to walk again, he convinced the Air Force to let him fly again. Think about that determination. Most people would have been grateful just to survive. 
Shul wanted to get back in the cockpit, but he didn't just want to fly. He wanted to fly the SR-71 Blackbird, the most demanding aircraft in the Air Force inventory. The medical board thought he was crazy. His body had endured trauma that would permanently ground most pilots, but Shul persisted. He underwent evaluation after evaluation, proving he still had the reflexes, the mental sharpness, the physical capability. And somehow, incredibly, he was selected. By 1982, Major Brian Shull was flying the SR-71 out of Beale Air Force Base in California. The man they said would never fly again was now piloting the fastest plane ever built. He wasn't just back, he was at the absolute pinnacle of military aviation. Flying the SR-71 wasn't like flying anything else. Before every mission, pilots had to spend an hour in pre-breathing pure oxygen to purge nitrogen from their blood streams. At the altitudes they'd be flying, any nitrogen left in the body could cause the bends, just like a deep-sea diver ascending too quickly. They wore pressure suits that looked like something from NASA, essentially becoming astronauts in everything but name, the pre-flight procedures took hours. Every system had to be perfect because there was no room for error at Mach 3 and 80,000 feet. The cockpit was cramped, hot before takeoff, and the visibility was limited. But once you lit those afterburners and started rolling down the runway, everything changed. Shul described the acceleration as otherworldly. The SR-71 didn't just take off, it transformed. Within seconds, you were traveling faster than any commercial airliner at cruise speed. The plane required a running start even to get airborne because it was so aerodynamically efficient at high speeds but so awkward at low speeds. Once at altitude and speed, the world below became abstract. At 80,000 feet, you could see the curvature of the Earth. The horizon stretched for 100 miles in every direction. You could watch weather systems form and dissipate beneath you like time-lapse photography. Thunderstorms that would terrify normal aircraft were just gray smudges far below. And the speed, the speed changed everything. In the SR-71, you could cross the continental United States in about 67 minutes. You could fly from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. faster than most people's morning commute, but it wasn't just about going fast. It was about the precision, the control, the perfect harmony between pilot and machine operating at the absolute edge of what was physically possible. The Blackbird community was small and tight-knit. These pilots shared something that only 85 people in history would ever experience. They had stories, of course, close calls, equipment failures, moments of pure exhilaration. But there was one story that Brian Schull told that became legendary, not just within the SR-71 community, but throughout all of aviation. It started with a simple question from an air traffic controller. This is where the legend begins. Schull and his reconnaissance systems officer, Walt Watson, were flying a routine mission across the western United States. They were cruising somewhere over Southern California, minding their own business at altitude. Below them, other aircraft were going about their days, completely unaware of the Blackbird slicing through the stratosphere miles above. Air traffic control radio frequencies are shared spaces. Everyone on the same frequency can hear everyone else. And on this particular day, the frequency was getting entertaining, it started innocently enough. A single-engine Cessna pilot called up Los Angeles Center, Center, Cessna 123, requesting ground speed check. The controller responded, Cessna 123, I show you at 90 knots, 90 knots, about 103 miles per hour, respectable for a small Cessna. Then a twin-engine Beechcraft pilot, clearly wanting to show off a bit, keyed his mic, Center, Beechcraft for 156, can we get a ground speed check? Beechcraft for 156, showing 140 knots, about 160 miles per hour. Nice, the frequency went quiet for a moment. Then a new voice, dripping with confidence, a Navy F-18 Hornet pilot. Center, Dusty 52, ground speed check please. You could almost hear the grin in his voice. Everyone knew what was coming. 
Dusty 52, I show you at 620 knots across the ground, over 710 miles per hour, boom, the fighter jock had just dominated the speed check conversation. Or so he thought. Up in the SR-71, at 80,000 feet, Brian Shul and Walt Watson had been listening to this entire exchange. They looked at each other. They knew what their ground speed was. They'd been holding back, cruising relatively slowly by Blackbird standards, but the moment was to perfect. Walt keyed the radio, center, Aspen 20, requesting ground speed check, there was a pause. The controller knew exactly who Aspen 20 was. Everyone on frequency knew what was coming, the anticipation was palpable. The controller's voice came back, and you could hear the smile in it. Aspen 20, I show you at 1,840 to knots across the ground. Silence. Over 2,100 miles per hour. More than three times the speed of the F-18. More than 20 times the speed of the Cessna. But here's where the story gets even better. That wasn't even their top speed, not even close. Because Brian Shule hadn't just been sitting there waiting for this moment to happen. No, as soon as Walt keyed the mic to ask for the speed check, Shule had lit the afterburners. By the time the controller responded, they were accelerating hard. The Blackbird was just getting started. Walt came back on frequency one more time. Ah, center, much thanks. We're showing a bit more than that up here. They were now traveling well over Mach 3 screaming across the sky faster than a rifle bullet, faster than the speed of heat, faster than anything else in the air that day or any day. The frequency stayed silent for a long time after that. What could anyone say? Now, you might be thinking, okay, cool story, but why does this matter? Why has this particular anecdote become one of the most retold stories in aviation history? Because it's not really about speed. It's about excellence. It's about the pursuit of something greater. It's about the culmination of decades of engineering genius, pilot skill, and human determination all converging in a single moment of pure, undeniable superiority. Brian Schull wasn't showing off in a petty way. He was representing something bigger than himself. He was the living embodiment of what happens when you push the boundaries of what's possible, when you refuse to accept limitations. When you dedicate yourself completely to mastering the most difficult challenges. Remember, this is the same man who was told he'd never walk again, let alone fly. The same man who defied every medical prediction, who fought his way back from burns that covered most of his body, who refused to let his story end in that jungle in Vietnam. And now here he was, at the controls of the most extraordinary machine ever built, casually demonstrating performance that seemed to defy the laws of physics. The speed check story spread like wildfire through the military aviation community. Pilots who were there that day tell their own versions. The Cessna pilot probably had no idea what was happening. The Beechcraft pilot realized pretty quickly. The F-18 pilot, who thought he was the fastest thing in the sky, got humbled in the most spectacular way possible. But it was all in good fun. That's what makes the story great. There was no malice in it, no cruelty. Just a perfect moment of one-upmanship that showcased exactly what the SR-71 was designed to do, be utterly untouchable. Shul himself has told this story countless times at air shows, in interviews, in his book Sled Driver, which has become one of the most sought-after aviation books ever published. Used copies sell for hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars because Shul captured something in his writing that people desperately want to connect with. The feeling of transcendence, of operating beyond normal limits. Of touching something extraordinary, the SR-71 Blackbird was officially retired in 1998, though NASA continued flying a few examples for research purposes until 1999 budget cuts. The end of the Cold War and the rise of satellite reconnaissance made the Blackbird obsolete, at least officially. But here's something incredible. To this day, the SR-71 still holds the absolute speed record for a crewed, air-breathing jet aircraft.
Despite all the advances in aviation technology, despite decades of development, nothing has ever flown faster in sustained flight. The record Blackbird set in 1976, flying coast to coast in 67 minutes and 50 for seconds, still stands. Think about that. A plane designed in the 1950s, built in the 1960s, still holds records in the 2020s. That's not just impressive engineering, that's transcendent engineering. Brian Jewell retired from the Air Force as a lieutenant colonel, but retirement didn't slow him down. He became an accomplished photographer, capturing stunning images of aircraft in flight, including the SR-71. His photographs have been featured in countless publications and exhibitions. He's written books, given hundreds of presentations, and become one of the most beloved figures in the aviation community. He's spent decades sharing his stories, not because he wants to brag, but because he understands something important. These stories inspire people. They show what's possible when human beings push themselves to their absolute limits. They remind us that the impossible is often just the difficult that hasn't been attempted yet. Every SR-71 pilot has their own stories. Every one of them experienced things that most people can't even imagine. But Shull's speed check story has resonated in a way that few others have. It's been animated, illustrated, retold in countless forums and videos and articles. It's become part of aviation folklore. Why? Because it's perfect. It has humor, it has drama, it has a satisfying conclusion. It showcases incredible technology while remaining deeply human. And it represents a moment of pure joy, the kind of joy that comes from being absolutely the best at something, even if just for a moment. The SR-71 Blackbird represented the pinnacle of Cold War engineering. It was designed to fly higher and faster than any threat, to gather intelligence from the most dangerous places on Earth, and to return safely every single time. It succeeded brilliantly, but the real story isn't just about the machine. It's about the people who flew it, People like Brian Shule, who refused to let circumstances define them, who pushed through pain and limitation to achieve something extraordinary. Shull's journey from burned crash survivor to SR-71 pilot is remarkable on its own. But that moment, that perfect moment over Southern California when he and Walt Watson answered that speed check request, crystallized everything the Blackbird represented, power, grace unmatched capability. And just a touch of swagger, today, the remaining SR-71 sit in museums across the country. You can visit them, walk around them, marvel at their sleek black titanium skin and those massive engines. They look fast standing still, children press their faces against display cases, dreaming of what it must have been like to fly them. But only 85 people will ever really know. Brian Shule is one of them, and because he's been generous enough to share his stories, the rest of us can at least imagine what it was like. To strap into the cockpit of the fastest plane ever built, to light those afterburners. To accelerate through Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3, and beyond. To look down at the Earth from the edge of space and realize that, in that moment, you are flying the closest thing to a spaceship that exists. To hear someone ask how fast you're going and respond with a number so staggering that it silences the entire frequency. The SR-71 Blackbird is gone from operational service, but its legend lives on. And at the heart of that legend are the pilots who flew it, people who proved that with enough skill, determination, and perhaps just a little bit of stubbornness, human beings can achieve things that seem impossible. So, the next time someone tells you something can't be done, remember Major Brian Shule. Remember the man who was told he'd never fly again and responded by flying the fastest plane ever built. Remember that speed check over Southern California. And remember that sometimes, just sometimes, when someone asks how fast you're going, the answer is faster than you can possibly imagine. If you enjoyed this story, hit that subscribe button. The world of aviation is full of incredible tales like this one, and I'll be bringing you more. Leave a comment telling me what aviation legend you'd like to hear about next. Until next time, keep looking up.